Welcome to Wellspring Community Church. We are glad to see you all here today. I also want to extend a warm welcome to those who are watching online. I hope and pray that the time you spend with us today will be a blessing to you. Before we start our worship service, let me go through some quick announcements. This month, we have been hearing messages based on the books of, book of Psalms. Today, we will be taking a break from the book of Psalms to focus on the health message, which will be delivered to us today by James Kirtley. James and his wife, Daryl, are medical missionaries who have been working together in the Philippines since 1944. Uh. 1994, <laughs> whoops, my bad. They're not that old. <laughs> <laughs> they conduct health seminars, evangelistic efforts, and cleansing programs throughout the Philippines. They run a lifestyle center in the mountains of Laguna where they, are, where they do cleansing programs for the reverse of heart disease, diabetes, rheumatoid, rheumatoid arthritis, and cancer. They are visiting the USA for a short time and will be returning this October 30th for an ev evangelistic series in Quezon this November 9th through the 19th. If you are impressed to support the Kurtleys in, Kurt in their medical missionary ministry, you may use the envelopes by the well in the back and mark it for James Kurtley. Check, checks can be made payable to James Kurtley. On October 22nd, we go back to the Book of Psalms and the message will be delivered by our very own Alexandra Umana. And on the 29th, we will hear from Daniel Lin. Our tithes and offerings are placed in the well located in the back. Please use the envelopes provided. For online giving, you may go to wellspring.org. The adult Sabbath school class meets every 9.30 a.m. every Saturday, meets every Saturday at 9.30 a.m. And the theme for this quarter is on death, dying, and the future hope. If you need a copy of the study guide, please contact Alan J at the number of the bottom of the screen, or you may go to ssnet.org and download a copy from that website. Junior slash early teen Sabbath school class meets every 10, 15 a.m. every Saturday in person and on Zoom. The Zoom ID and passcode information is on the screen. The class is led by our very own Eliza, who is our own youth. The lesson material can be found on the websites listed at the bottom of the screen. The beginner and primary Sabbath school class meets every 9.30 on Saturday in person, and the lesson material is called Learn About God's Love. Prayer is powerful because it means it is the means which we connect with God the one who created us and everything in this world and more. He is the source of all our power. Every Wednesday at 7.30 p.m., we meet for prayer on Zoom. The ID and passcode are on the screen. And if you want to submit a prayer request or receive the Zoom link, please contact Florence at 408-891-0531. Today at 1.30 p.m., we will continue with the health seminar entitled Healing the Heart and a food pre preparation demo. Our presenters, James and Daryl Kirtley, have a lot of information to share with you, which I believe will be a great bene benefit for you and your loved ones. We will also get to taste some really good food, healthy and, he and healing food, so don't miss this afternoon's seminar. Mountain View Academy is holding Academy Day on October 27th, this Thursday, wait, this Thursday, yes. This will be next Thursday. This will be the time to meet the staff and teachers there, tour the campus and make new friends and even experience classes. Free lunch will be served and a scholarship is also being offered. If you know of a teenager who might be interested in checking out Mountain View Academy, tell them about Academy Day coming up. RSVP is encouraged. Men, if you haven't signed up yet or if you need help signing up, to attend the men's retreat, talk to one of our men here in the church. The men's retreat is about two weeks away, October 28th through 30th. I want to encourage, encourage those who haven't signed up yet to do so. You don't want to miss this, what the guest speaker, Joe Kidder, has to share. On November 5, a prayer conference will be held on sunny, 
at Sunnyville SDA Church. The theme is Praying with Purpose. Wellspring will be closed that Saturday because we want you to be able to attend this powerful event. The presenters are Ricardo Graham and Rob and Sandy Colon. That same day, November 5, at 6.30 p.m., Mountain View Academy will be celebrating its 100th year. You are all invited to celebrate with Mountain View Academy. There will be food booths, live and silent auctions, a basketball game, and a birthday cake. The celebration will be held at MVA Gym. There will be a youth and young adult leadership training on November 12th with Pastor Andrew Uyayama. It will be held at the Hope Madera SDA Church. Morning session starts at 11, and the afternoon session will start at 1.30. Lunch will be provided. If you are interested, please RSVP using the QR code or contact them at yet at, at cccsda.org. Women, save the date, January 27 through 29, 29, 2023. The theme is Abide Forever, and the speakers are Sandy Colon and Deanne Bragal. Details on the location will follow. Now, let's see which family we'll be praying for this coming week. This one, right? Big stop. This one. Yeah. Just the envelope? Yeah. Okay. Wait, the little card inside. This week, we will be praying for Mike and Perla and the family. So now that you know, we will be keeping them in our prayers this week. Now let's watch a short video. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens. Through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them? You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor. You have made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet, all flocks and herds and the animals of the wild, the birds in the sky and the fish in the sea, all that swim the paths of the seas. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Now I'd like you to uh, join me in as I start off this worship with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful Sabbath you've given to us. I want to start off by praising you and thanking you for who you are, allowing us ev everyone to come today and those who are watching. Please let us all be blessed and apply this, what we are going to learn today to our daily lives. We all love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Again, happy Sabbath. How many of you are thankful that God is the one who created you? <laughs> I think this, this morning during Sabbath school, we were talking a lot about God being the creator, right? So this at this time let's all rise and just give our praises to god for being our creator because when you really think about it him as a creator is just like it's just beyond really what we can understand and yet in his greatness you know he wants to be with us wants to dwell with us so i think that's a really awesome thing right so we let's let's all join and praise god for who he is
was busy creating our world, and he, after he created man, he also created a day of rest, right? And um, the Bible says that the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. So here we can see how God really cares about us because he knows that we need rest. And so let's sing about the Sabbath rest that God has blessed us with. We set our work aside, we leave our cares behind on this day. Thank you. 
Please be seated. Leave the laptop connected. Okay. Uh, I don't need the microphone. Thank you. At this time, we'll switch back to the slides. At this time, we're going to have the children's story time. And 
that's not what this children's story time is all about. Hello, boys and girls. This is Aunt Fernita. Today's story is called Strong Outside, Weak Inside. The memory verse is from Psalm chapter 51, verse 10. It says, Create in me a pure heart, O God. The message is God loves me and can work with me even though I make mistakes. Have you ever done something you knew was wrong? How did you feel? That is probably how Samson felt. Again and again, he ignored God's plan. But God did not give up on Samson. Samson grew up hearing his mother telling him about God's special plan for his life. She often spoke of the angel who had spoken to her and Samson's father before he was born. The angel told them that Samson's hair should not be cut. He was to become a Nazarite, set apart to serve God. God had promised, As long as you do not cut Samson's hair, I will give him strength. God wanted Samson to use his strength to lead Israel against the Philistines. But Samson did not follow all of God's instructions. Samson wanted his own way. He wanted to follow his own wishes, not God's. Even though Samson continued to disobey God and do what he wanted, God still worked with him to bring down the Philistines. One day, Samson went to the Philistine city of Gaza to see a woman there. Then he was trapped in her house. It was midnight. Some men were whispering outside the house. The house is surrounded, they said. We'll kill him at dawn. Even though Samson had abandoned God, God was still with him. Samson ran to the city gates, but they were locked. Then Samson grabbed the huge wooden doors, lifted them right out of the ground, and walked away. The Philistines were amazed. Not long after his escape from Gaza, Samson went to see a Philistine woman named Delilah. When the Philistine leaders found out about this, they went to see Delilah. We'll give you lots of money if you find out the secret of Samson's strength, they promised. Three times Delilah begged Samson to tell her his secret. Three times he told her a lie. Three times she tied Samson, then called to him, The Philistines are attacking you! Three times Samson escaped easily. You don't love me, Delilah finally told Samson. If you really loved me, you would tell me the secret of your strength. You would tell me everything. Every day, Delilah begged Samson to tell her the secret of his strength. Over and over, she begged him until Samson got tired of hearing her ask. Samson finally told her the secret of his strength. If my head were shaved, I would be weak, he said. That night, Delilah had Samson's hair cut. Then she screamed, Samson, the Philistines are attacking you! This time, Samson's strength had left him. More important, God had left him too. The Philistines captured Samson and put out his eyes. They took him back to Gaza through the very gates he had once carried. Thousands of people came to see Samson, who was now weak and blind and helpless. The Philistines put Samson to work in the prison. Gradually, his hair began to grow back. Samson knew he had done wrong. He told God that he was sorry and asked God to forgive him. After some time, the Philistines threw a party in a temple to their idol, Dagon. They were celebrating Samson's capture. During the celebration, Samson was led from his prison cell. There, in the temple, men teased Samson and humiliated him. 
Finally, Samson asked to rest. A servant led him to the pillars in the middle of the temple. There Samson prayed, Oh God, please strengthen me one more time. Samson pushed against two main pillars in the center of the temple. God gave him strength again. The pillars collapsed and the temple fell. Samson was killed along with thousands of Philistines. God had given Samson enormous physical strength, but Samson disobeyed God. He was strong, but on the inside, Samson was weak. Let's ask God to strengthen us inside and outside so we can resist temptation and always do what is right. This podcast is read by Franita Buddy for gracelink.net. Created and produced by Falbo Fowler. Post produced by Faith Toe at Studio El Piso. The theme music is by Clayton Kinney. Animation and artwork by Giogo Godoy. The audio engineer was Karel Holness. For more information, please visit gracelink.net. Happy Sabbath. Uh, please bow your head with me for prayer. Um, thank you for this blessed Sabbath and the plans that you have for us. And forgive us for not being obedient to your plan. Father, cleanse our hearts so that we could be spiritually strong to resist temptations and do what's right according to the Bible. I also want to pray for the adults in each of these children's lives that they'll be po- that they'll be a positive influence in letting God change their heart. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Sing this prayer song, Change My Heart, O God. Change my heart, O God. Make it ever true. Change my heart. my heart, oh God, make it ever true, change my heart. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for um, bringing us to church this Sabbath, and um, most importantly, thank you for waking us up um, and getting us through the night. Uh, We just want to come to you in prayer this morning um, and ask a special blessing um, on everybody here, everyone who's listening online, 
um, and everyone um, that we've come into contact with this week. I want to pray especially for um, any health concerns that we might have. Uh, we pray especially for Hannah and Uncle Ramel. Um, I also want to pray for the mission trip that's currently going on in the Silicon Valley. I want to pray especially for all the books that have found um, their way into homes. I just pray that um, that you will um, have those books be a shining light in the home um, in your time. Um, and I pray that anyone that um, has access to these books will be given a special blessing um, for understanding what they are reading. Um, and I pray that you'll place people in their paths to help them um, discuss what they've read or um, if they have questions. I also want to pray um, for a friend of one of our members, Tram. Uh, I would want to pray for their special request on what they're dealing with in their family. Um, we also want to pray for everyone involved. Um, and we pray that you will give them peace and wisdom um, and comfort as well as they go through this difficult time. Um, we also pray for um, the member of whom uh, is a friend, that you also give them a special blessing and know how to be uh, support to um, her friend. Um, and we pray that um, you will continue to open our hearts and our minds to the truths that you have for us. And we pray that uh, every day that we will um, learn to love you um, and be more like you. Um, we love you. In your name we pray. Amen. Technology is good, and sometimes it's frustrating. <laughs> but if you want um, that chapter, Psalm 139 is a very good chapter to meditate on. So you can look that up and read that for yourself. You can probably put the mic down over there. Yes. Good. Kill 36, 26. 27. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put in within you, and I will take away the story heart of our, out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you, and call you to walk into my status and ye shall keep my judgments and do them. Let us pray. Father in heaven, thank you for the Sabbath day and, the, and all the blessings of the, this week. Please bless us as we worship you 
this morning and please be with our speaker today in Jesus name I pray amen Testing one, two, three. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Let me just get this uh, projector on the screen here. Okay. Um, let me see if I need to make an adjustment here. Maybe I need to reconnect. Okay. Whoops. Didn't mean to do that. Okay. Well, there we go. Okay, so again, happy Sabbath, everyone. And I'm grateful for the privilege of being here with you this morning and to share the message that God has placed upon my heart. Um, we have enjoyed the last four months uh, visiting the United States. Uh, I grew up in San Diego, California. And uh, in 1993, I went to the Philippines uh, with some friends of mine on a mission trip, and I met my wife, and six months later, we were married, and the rest is history, and here I am today. That's the short version. So you'll hear some of the previous experiences as we look at our message this morning. And welcome to those who are watching online as well. Thank you for joining us, and may God bless this message is my prayer. So... Um, the message I want to share this morning is called Heart Talk. Now, we're going to talk about the heart. We're going to talk about the heart, the physical, actual heart that's beating inside of our chest, and then we're going to talk about the spiritual heart. We know that, according to statistics, that the leading cause of death in the United States is heart disease. In fact, in um, 2020, 696,962 people died in this year, uh, in this country alone. And, of course, 602,350 died of cancer, and COVID, of course, uh, was 350,831, and then accidents, stroke, and other diseases were lower on the list. And we know that no matter what country it is throughout the entire world, heart disease is always the number one killer. Um, and this particular website, Healthline, tells us that heart disease is more common among men, more common among people who smoke, and of course are obese or overweight, and those who have a family history of heart disease or heart attacks. And of course, if you're over 55 years of age, you have a higher risk of heart disease as well. What causes heart disease? Of course, heart disease is a term that's used to describe a range of conditions, uh, it could be high, high blood pressure, it could be arrhythmia or irregular heartbeats, it could be coronary artery disease, which is blocked arteries, which we're going to talk about. Heart defects are included. And of course, tips for prevention. Again, quit smoking, eat a healthier diet, exercise at least 30 minutes a day, or that should be five days a week, and maintain a healthy, well, a a healthy weight. And of course, cancer, we know, is the number two cause of death throughout the entire world. Again, more than half a million people died of cancer in this country in 2020 alone. And again, uh, it is more common among those who use tobacco and alcohol products, um, those who are exposed to an excessive amount of sunlight, especially if they are eating animal fats. Um, and people with chronic inflammation, those who are overweight, and again, family history plays a role as well. So we're going to talk, we're going to zero in this morning on heart disease. That's what we're going to talk about. Because heart disease is related to blockage of the arteries. Notice this particular artery on the left here. The blood is flowing freely through this normal carotid artery. On the right, we have plaque that has built up inside that artery. And as that, built, that plaque builds up, then, of course, the opening of that artery becomes smaller and the pressure from the blood trying to get through there goes higher. That's called high blood pressure, okay? That's what it is. It's like when you squeeze the garden hose as the water is going through it. It builds up pressure before the uh, blockage occurs, right? And so this, this blockage or this plaque is called cholesterol, 
Okay? Now, where does cholesterol come from? Well, real saturated fat, cholesterol, growth hormones, antibiotics, and E. coli comes from cows. Now, in the Bible, we know that God allowed the eating of animal foods, certain clean animals, after the flood because there was no vegetation left on the earth after the flood, right? Everything was destroyed. It was totally wiped out. It was an emergency arrangement. It was plan B. It was not God's plan A. So in plan B, God made another restriction. He said in Leviticus 3.17 that they were not to eat the fat or the blood if they were going to eat animal food. Unfortunately, most people who eat this kind of food do not eat it, eat it uh, according to the Bible. They eat it with the fat and with the blood. That's why it is very delicious. At least these ladies think so, right? Yeah, very delicious. And if you have eaten more than your share of this kind of food, you will end up on the operating table for what we call bypass surgery. I have several friends who had heart attacks and also had bypass surgery. And now we're going to watch a short video clip. And we don't have any sound, but that's okay. I will narrate the video as I play the video on the screen. We know that every year people are rushed to the hospital because of heart attack, stroke, high blood pressure, and other uh, various causes of their heart disease. And um, this video we're going to see, if we can get it, yeah, is a, a clip about Mr. Phillips. Now, Mr. Phillips had a heart attack and he was scheduled for bypass surgery. Well, the doctor, Michael Clapper, who is an anesthesiologist, was on duty late that night, and so he had to draw the man's blood. Well, he took Mr. Phillips' blood, and they were going to work up the blood there in the lab, and he says, I couldn't believe my eyes when I took the sample of Mr. Phillips' blood. He said, the normal blood is clear. This is somebody else's blood, but this is the blood of Mr. Phillips. It is like... Elmer's glue, it's like cottage cheese, all gooey and sticky in the test tube. It was thick. It was very hard, hardened, actually. It was almost completely solid. And so he asked Mr. Phillips, Mr. Phillips, did you eat before you came into the hospital tonight? And he said, yes, I did. He said, well, well what did you eat? He said, well, I had a, a double cheeseburger, uh, and I had some French fries and a Coke. He said, oh, and a milkshake, and a milkshake. And so all that butterfat from the milkshake and, and the cholesterol from the meat and the, the oil from the oily French fries oozed out into Mr. Phillips' blood and caused that clogging that is in his heart. And so the doctors open up his chest the next morning for surgery and the surgeon began to pull out the cholesterol that completely blocked one of his main arteries going to the heart. And so here we have a picture of the surgeon uh, carefully removing the blockage to this main artery, and some of them had to be totally bypassed. But in this particular instance, he's going to pull the cholesterol out of the artery, and he says, okay, let's give it a little tug there. And the surgeon says to the nurses, maybe you can give me a little hand there, and they were chuckling and kind of laughing because they thought that was funny. But nevertheless, the doctor is pulling this cholesterol. It looks like uh, cheese. It looks like cheese, doesn't it? Solid. Solid fat coming out of that artery. And the doctor, the surgeon performing this procedure says, there you go, number one killer in the United States of America. Not only in the United States, but throughout the entire world. And unfortunately, not only in this country, but even in the Philippines where I live um, and my wife, we know that people are very prone and love to eat lots of fish and a lot of people think that eating fish is healthier than eating meat because it has omega-3 and omega-6 those are good things right but what they don't tell you is that the cholesterol is going to clog your arteries and create heart disease just like the hamburgers that are sold in the fast food restaurants today it's the same Flesh food is flesh food, is cholesterol, is cholesterol. It doesn't matter if it's an egg, if it's cheese, if it's cottage cheese, if it's fish, if it's chicken, if it's turkey, turkey, if it's meat, or if it's pork. It's all the same. And no wonder why so many people are sick and dying today. You know, if we on this chart, we have a picture of a T-bone steak that's 3.5 ounces. It has approximately 79 milligram, milligrams of cholesterol. If we look at the herring, which is a type of fish, we take 15 grams of the oil. It has 115 milligrams. Salmon has 
73 sardines, which is one of the staple foods for many of the people in the Philippines. They love to eat the sardines in the can. 106 milligrams of cholesterol in just 15 grams of oil. And the cod liver has 86. You know, God gave to the Seventh-day Adventist Church a special message regarding health and lifestyle. And that includes diet. In fact, we are told through inspiration from the book Councils on Diet and Foods, page 380 by Ellen G. White. It says, vegetables, fruits, and grains should compose our diet. Not an ounce of flesh meat should enter our stomachs. The eating of flesh is unnatural. We are to return to God's original purpose in the creation of man. <clears throat> again and again, I have been shown that God is trying to lead us back step by step to his original design that man should subsist upon the natural products of the earth. Among those who are waiting for the coming of the Lord, how many of you are waiting for the coming of the Lord? Amen. Among those who are waiting for the coming of the Lord, that's us, meat eating will eventually be done away. Flesh will cease to form a part of their diet. We should ever keep this end in view and endeavor to work steadily toward it. I cannot think that in the practice of flesh eating, we are in harmony with the light which God has been pleased to give. This is taken from the book Councils, I'm sorry, Christian Temperance and Bible Hygiene, page 119, written almost 100 years ago. So if we look at the cause and the effect, we can more clearly understand why so many people are dropping dead every minute of every day throughout the entire world from heart disease, heart attack, and stroke. You see, it is because we are eating the wrong kind of food. What a barbecue that is, right? <laughs> and the result is like Mr. Miriam Allen. It says, rest in peace. But that's labeled wrong. It should say, rest in Greece. <laughs> because you see, Mr. Miriam Allen probably died of heart disease. And because God loves us, he entrusted to the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And by the way, did you know that the Seventh-day Adventist Church is the only religion throughout the entire world that has a health message? There is no other religion that has a health message to proclaim to the world except the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And that's us. And because God loves us, he gave us a health message so that we don't have to end up having a heart attack. We don't have to have diabetes and cancer and rheumatoid arthritis and lupus and autoimmune diseases. God wants us to be the healthiest, the happiest, and the holiest by the grace of God through faith in Jesus Christ and the holiest people on the planet. Amen? If we go to the Bible, the Bible talks about diet. This is God's original plan. We're not talking about plan B, you know, after the flood, you can eat the clean animals, and then, and then later on God tried to put them back on the original plan when they were coming out of Egypt and he rained manna from heaven. We're not talking about that. We're talking about the original plan, not plan B. We're talking about plan A. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb-bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed, to you it shall be for meat. Genesis 1.29. And thou shalt eat the herb of the field. Genesis 3, verse 18. So you see, God gave the fruits, the vegetables, the nuts, the grains, the seeds, and the legumes. This was the diet that we were created by God to eat. And unfortunately... Because we have strayed away from God's original plan. Now, this amazing machine is smoking and knocking and pinging and making all kinds of noise. And we have all kinds of problems and we're breaking down and we're falling apart and we're dying in our 50s and in our 40s. Because we have strayed away from God's original plan. And so God is encouraging us to go back to the Garden of Eden. Was there any heart disease in Eden? No. No. How about diabetes, cancer, rheumatoid arthritis? No. And what was the program in Eden? They were eating the products of the earth, the natural products of the earth, the plant-based diet, and they were exercising. They were dressing and keeping the garden, right? And they were drinking water. They had sunshine and fresh air, and they were talking and walking with God. 
and they were the healthiest people ever. Unfortunately, because we have strayed away from God, not only in our physical lifestyle, but we have severed our connection with God through sin, then we have spiritual heart disease. We talked about physical heart disease. Now we're going to talk about spiritual heart disease. You see, the Bible tells us that the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. It's not just wicked. It's desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Jeremiah 17, verse 9 and 10. You know, Jesus told us in the book of Matthew, chapter 15, verse 19 and 20, he says, for out of the heart, and he's, we're, when we're talking about the heart, we're not talking about the pump that's pumping the blood throughout your body. We're talking about the mind, okay? He says, out of the heart proceed what? Evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man, but to eat with unwashed hands defileth not a man. You see, if you don't wash your hands before eating, that's not going to change your thought process. You see. And remember, what is in the heart or in the mind comes out of what? Out of the mouth. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Luke 6, verse 45. Unfortunately, spiritual heart disease is so rampant throughout the entire world that we have abuse, we have violence, we have war, we have rape, we have murder because of spiritual heart disease, because the heart is desperately wicked. And spiritual heart disease, unfortunately, has afflicted many young children through abuse, such as myself. You see, I grew up in a home with, uh, my stepdad was an alcoholic. He was a professional. He was a commander in the Navy. He was high up. He had thousands of people under him working for him. He was respected in the community. But I was sexually molested from the time that I was a very young child until I was a teenager. I was beaten. I was psychologically abused as well. And because of that, I turned to drugs and alcohol at a very young age. When I was 19 years old, I overdosed on methamphetamines. They call that speed or shabu in the, in the Philippines. We call it shabu. Uh, methamphetamine speed. Um, anyways, so I remember when I overdosed on these drugs, which I was completely addicted to. I remember lying in the hospital and pleading with God to spare my life. And I didn't know who God was. I didn't know what he was like. I had a very dark view of who this God is. I believed there was Jesus, and I knew he was the Son of God, and that he died for me, but I didn't, that's about all I knew. I didn't know, I didn't read the Bible only once in a great while. I actually hid it under my bed because I was afraid of the beasts in Revelation and 666 and those things. But I didn't understand it. And so... I remember pleading with God to spare my life, and I said, Lord, if you spare my life, I promise I will never touch drugs again as long as I live. Shortly thereafter, I went right back to the pit that I was in, back to drugs, alcohol, marijuana. And so, make a long story short, I ended up in Italy. My parents were stationed in Naples. My dad called me. I don't even know how he got my phone number. I was living with some friends. And they called me on the phone and said, hey, you want to come over and go to college? And I said, sure. I'd, you know, I, let me think about it. And I said, well, of course, I was at odds with the family. I didn't want to talk to them. But I thought it over. And I said, you know, my life is not very well here. So I better go back over there. And, you know, I can maybe travel in Europe or whatever. And so I went to Italy. And I lived there for almost two years. And while I was there, I continued. I entered college. I lasted four weeks. And then I found where the drugs and the alcohol was and everything. And then I started dealing drugs and selling drugs and doing all kinds of bad things. And I got into a rock band. I was into playing electric guitar. There I am there. 19 years old, full of anger, bitterness, and hatred. Living a very miserable existence. 
but I'm on my second chance here in this picture. And one day I was on my way home from band practice and I had enough drugs in the visor of my vehicle, about a big block of drugs, about that big, enough to send me to prison for at least five years. The maximum penitentiary in Naples, Italy is called Poggio Real. That's where they put all the murderers and the rapists and the drug addicts all together in one big huge compound. And we were driving home and all of a sudden the police car was following us and the lights went on. I said, uh-oh, we're in big trouble. And my whole body began to shake. And they said, get out of the car. And they, they put us up against the car and I was up against the car and they were searching the car they said, where's the drugs? I said, we don't have any drugs. What are you talking about? And right in the visor was the drugs. They didn't see it. It was pushed up against the roof of the car. And I was up against the car, and I said, Lord, if you, del if you deliver me, I promise, if you just give me one more chance, I promise, here I am lying again, I promise that I will never touch drugs again as long as I live. And now I know I'm in really big trouble because I lied to God. Here I am, 21 years old. I lied to God two years before that, and I was like Jonah, running away from God as fast as I can. And now I'm up against a car, and the Italian police carry Uzi machine guns and 45s. They shoot first and ask questions later. That's how it works over there. So I'm up against the car. They search the vehicle. They said, okay, you go. And my friends were like, oh, man, it's a good thing they didn't catch us. And I was, my whole body was shaking. And I decided to come back to the United States because I realized that if I continue to live in Italy, they're going to catch me. I'm going to get busted. And so I came back to the United States. I was living in my car. I was doing drugs still. I was working full time. And one day I met this young man in the warehouse. And he was a Seventh-day Adventist Christian. And this young man said, I have a book for you. I want you to read this. And I was like, what's that? And I looked at this book, and it's called Steps to Christ. And by this time, my whole life was in complete shambles. I did not want to live anymore. I was so miserable. You see, I believe the lie of Satan that if I do what I want, where I want, when I want, how I want, as long as I want, and whenever I want, I'm going to be so happy. And I realized as I came to the end of my rope, that that was a big lie. And so here I am reading this book, Steps to Christ, while doing drugs and drinking alcohol. And halfway through the book, I read this statement by Ellen White, where she says, when we give our hearts to Jesus, what do we give up? A dirty heart for God to cleanse and purify by his own blood. He gives us something better than the world has to offer. I'm just paraphrasing. And I said, Lord, I'm tired of my life. I'm tired of drugs. Please help me. And I cried out to God. And that night, I claimed the promise in John chapter 1, verse 12, which says, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. In one night, I was free from drugs and alcohol, just like that. And that was 36 years ago. And I gave my life to Jesus. And I claim the promise in Ezekiel 36, a new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you, God says, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh, and I will put my spirit within you, and cause you to walk in my statutes, and ye shall keep my judgments, and do them. And one day, I was working in the warehouse on Saturday, Sabbath, and the young man came into work, and I said, oh, you're working today? He said, oh, no, 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 He's, today's the Sabbath. And I was like, what? The Sabbath, the only word Sabbath I ever heard was Black Sabbath, you know, the rock group, you know. I mean, that's all, I, I never heard what Sabbath, I didn't even know what that meant, actually. And so, he said, no, I don't work on Sabbath, today is God's rest day. And I was like, what? Like, that sounds weird. So he got his Bible, because he left his Bible at work by accident, and he left. And I asked him during the week, what is Sabbath? I never heard of that. He said, oh, that's the seventh day. I was like, really? 
I was like, wow, what is it? And, and at this time, I was beginning to search for God. And I started asking lots of questions. You see, my friends had hair down to here. They were into heavy metal rock music. We played guitars. We were doing drugs. And after my conversion, I told my friends, just don't ever come back. Just leave me alone. I isolated myself in my room, and I would study scripture for three to five hours a day for two years. And you know, God made a promise in Ezekiel 36, verse 25. He says, Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness, filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. What is this talking about? Is this talking about, where, you know, like a baptism with sprinkling? Is that what this is? No. You know, Paul the Apostle says, in the New Testament, he explains it. He says, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church, and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. You see, the water that cleanses and purifies our lives, that God sprinkles upon you, is his word. And as you sprinkle water, not all of it comes down on you at the same time. So God reveals one ray of light after another. As you obey the light that God gives you, he gives you more. As you study the scriptures, he gives you more and more understanding, more and more grace, and more and more power to do his will as you choose Jesus every day, every moment of the day. And unfortunately, spiritual heart disease is a very, very deadly sickness. And because of the abuse and all of the trauma that I went through growing up, even after my conversion many years later, after I married my lovely wife, this anger kept coming out, this anger and this rage of bitterness towards my dad and others. And so, I remember my wife and I used to drive to church. We'd be driving to church and we would be arguing and arguing and arguing. And it's not because my wife is an argumentative person. It's because I had a lot of issues that were coming to the surface and I would argue about everything. A lot of anger. So angry on the way to church that sometimes I would have to pull the car over and get out and go, and I was just full of anger. And I didn't understand why. And then we would go to church and we would enter the building and we would say, Happy Sabbath. <laughs> and after church, we'd get back in the car and pick up the argument right where it began, where, right where it left off. And for years, this went on. And I said, Lord, I don't understand. And after we visited my parents many years later, when we had our own children and everything, I realized that it was because of the bitterness and the anger that was unresolved because of unforgiveness towards my dad. And so one morning I was reading in the scripture that God says in the book of Matthew, I was reading this in Matthew chapter 6. This is the Lord's Prayer. It says in verse 14 and 15, for if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. And I said, and the Holy Spirit said, you need to forgive your dad. I said, oh, I can never do that. It's not fair what I went through. It's not my fault. And so I struggled with this for years. And finally, I used to go through depression, anger, fits of anger, rage, a lot of depression. And so I started, I was impressed by the Lord that I need to start exercising. I would jog. And so one morning I couldn't sleep. I would wake up in the middle of the night and all of those bad memories of all the trauma I went through growing up, the beatings, the molestation, everything, Satan would play these horrible videotapes over and over in my mind. And so one morning, about 2 o'clock in the morning, I got up and I jumped the fence to the high school, which was next to where we were living in Sacramento at the time. And I was jogging. And then I said, you know, I said, it's not fair. I blame God. I said, y you did this to me. 
it's not fair. You know, a lot of people blame God because they don't understand. Theologically, I understood that God is not responsible for sin or its results. I read that in Great Controversy. How many of you read that? Origin of Evil chapter? Yeah, I read that. I understood that, but in my heart, in my, my emotional being, I couldn't accept that. God must be responsible because he allowed it. It's not fair. And so I shook my fist at God and I shouted at him. And I said, it's not fair. And just then, this picture flashed in my mind. It wasn't a vision or a dream. It was just this mental picture flashed in my mind. And it was a picture of my dad abusing me and Satan behind him telling him, do this, do that, do this, do that. And I realized on a very personal and emotional level that God was in no way responsible for the trauma and abuse that I had gone through for so many years. And then I came to the point where I could forgive God, as if I needed to forgive God, but you get what I'm saying, right? That I could no longer, I was no longer blaming God, but I was able to emotionally put the blame on the devil himself and the one who used his freedom of choice to hurt me, which happened to be my dad. And so now I understood in my heart that God loved me and God suffered with me through all of the abuse. And now I was faced with forgiveness. And so my parents came to visit us in Sacramento years ago. And we were taking a walk at the lake and me and my dad kind of lingered behind and my wife and, and her mother and father and, and my mom were walking up ahead. And so there was a bench and the Lord said, here. So we sat down and we were talking and I said, you know, Dad, I want to tell you something. And I looked him in the eye and I says, I forgive you for everything that you have done to me. And he broke down in tears and he says, I could never forgive myself for what I have done. He was a repentant man, actually. He stopped drinking. He repented of what he had done. And I believe that he died a man that was repentant, and I believe he'll be in God's kingdom when Jesus comes to resurrect the righteous. Oh, by the way, he came from a family of nine siblings, all who were molested by both parents. These are generational sins that are carried down from one generation to the next, and the only thing that can break these generational sins, whether it's drug abuse, whether it's sexual molestation, whether it's violence, bad words, whatever it is, the only thing that can break that cycle is the grace of Jesus Christ. And I chose to allow God to change my life. And I tell you, the first 21 years of my life was absolute hell. But ever since 21, I've been in heaven ever since because Jesus is my heaven. You know, Ellen White says that the presence of Christ in the soul is heaven. Uh, heaven is a literal place, but how could you enjoy in heaven without the presence of Jesus? You get, you get my point? Yeah. And so God made a promise in the Bible. He said, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. You see, God wants to do a work of healing our heart disease. Bitterness, anger, unforgiveness, fear, hatred. To proclaim liberty to the captives. Have you been bound by Satan in his prison house? Is there something that you're struggling with in your life that you just can't seem to let go? God will give you deliverance today and now if you ask him. And the opening of the prison to them that are bound. You know, by the grace of God, I am a free man. I'm no longer a prisoner of anger and bitterness and unforgiveness. I'm a happy camper. He came to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. And Zion is the church, by the way. There are many people who come on Sabbath. Happy Sabbath! But inside they're mourning because of past issues. 
or because things didn't go well this week. He came to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Are you struggling with depression? God wants to give you the spirit of praise. He wants you to be free. He wants you to enjoy the fullness of his grace today. That they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. So what is the spiritual cholesterol that is blocking your spiritual walk with God today? Paul talks about that in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31 and 2. He says, Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. You see, there are many people who are sitting in this room this morning who are broken. There are some people in this room who have been abused growing up. It's more common than we realize. I know it's very common. Last time I gave this message, I had two people in one church come up to me and said, I was molested as a child, and I can't seem to get free from the anger and the bitterness. You see, because Satan is holding them bound in that prison. And I said, all you got to do is let Jesus take control. Let him come in and heal the pain that you have gone through. And only when you do that will you be free. Jesus said, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And then, of course, the Jews, they said, well, we be Abraham's seed. We were never in bondage to any man. And Jesus said, if the Son, that's Jesus, if the Son shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. You know, for years, I couldn't talk about this. No way. I'm talking about this as if I'm talking about somebody else's experience. But I'm talking about my experience and what God has done in my life. It's because I am so separated from the old anger and bitterness and trauma that it's no longer a part of me. It's gone. It happened. It was real. It was painful. But it's gone. The pain is gone. Because God has healed me of the past. The world is full of men and women who are carrying a heavy burden of sorrow and suffering and sin. God sends his children to reveal to them him who will take away the burden and give them rest. It is the mission of Christ's servants to help, to bless, and to heal. You know, during lockdown in the Philippines, I have a whole other message about our experience during lockdown. It's another, another opportunity. We were able to visit all of our neighbors because we weren't allowed to even leave our town, much less the house. Yeah. Only one person was allowed to leave the home, and you must have a quarantine pass, and it's only to buy essential goods, and then you've got to stand in a long line just to buy food. That's what we went through in the Philippines. Yeah. So we, were, we had to change our whole ministry. I was like, God, we, we can't even move. We can't travel. We travel all over the Philippines. We've been traveling for 20 years. And now we're stuck in the little barangay, the little village where our property is, where we have our lifestyle center. And so the Lord said, start teaching those people in your neighborhood. I said, but I don't speak Tagalog. He said, I will teach you how to speak fluent Tagalog. Somewhat fluent. (laughs) Pretty fluent. Actually, the evangelistic series that we're doing next month, I'm the speaker for the Bible topics, and my wife is doing the health lectures. I'm going to deliver the message in Tagalog, by the grace of God. And this will be our third crusade in James speaking Tagalog. It's a challenge, but I have to think. Anyways, so we were able to visit this man. He had a stroke. And it wasn't just his physical disease that was his main problem. His main problem was remorse for cheating on his wife, 
for being dishonest, for stealing. And I told him, you need to come and lay it all at the foot of Jesus and he will set you free. You see, this is our work as a church. There are people out there who are hurting and God wants us to reach their hearts for him. Because we serve a living Savior, he has the power, he has the grace, and he can do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. And so at this time, I'd like to ask my wife to come up and join me as we sing a song. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, okay, let me... Let me disconnect here. Um, hmm. Because the slides are here. Is it in your, is it in your cell phone? Let me see. Um, let me see if I have the, let me see if I have it in my phone. Hang on just a minute. You want to say something about the song? No? Okay, hang on. All right, bear with me just a moment. I, I overlooked something, but that's okay. We'll, uh. Okay. Okay, I'll just try to All right, I'm going to show I'm going to show some slides while we're singing. And these are slides of our mission work uh in the Philippines during lockdown. And uh I'm sorry, that's not it. Let me let me switch up here. And so we're going to sing this song entitled Because He Lives. Okay, we can have the music now, please. Thank you. No, that's not it. Track 11, sorry. Uh, it's a different album. It's Minstrel's Oblation is the album, and it's track 11. Minstrel's Oblation, track 11. in the show. <laughs> Minstrels. No, it's there. Okay, you, you, I can, let me, let me help him get the track real quick. Yeah, so. That's it. A little bit louder, please. Thank you. He will 
We serve a living Savior who is ever present through his spirit and who by his grace can carry us through 
all the way to the second coming if we will just depend on him. May God bless us. Happy th Sabbath. And as we say in Tagalog, salamat po. So shall we uh, rise for our closing prayer? Father in heaven, we thank you that Jesus lives to make intercession for us and that he is able to save unto the uttermost those who come unto God by him. We thank you for your promises of your word and we ask for healing that our heart disease will be cleansed and purified in the blood of Jesus. That those of us who are holding on to bitterness, anger, wrath, malice, that we will let it go. That you will come in and heal our heart. That we can be free from Satan's prison house. Lord, I pray for those who are here this morning, those who may be watching and listening online, who have pain from the past, who have bitterness or unforgiveness in their hearts towards those who have trespassed against them. I pray for their healing, that you will help them to give it all to you, just as you have done for me. Thank you, Lord. Give us thy grace. Help us to trust in you and to let you do what we cannot do and to cleanse our lives. We pray for those who are suffering with heart disease, the physical heart disease, that they will make changes in their lifestyle that will help them to experience the abundant life that Jesus came to give to every person. Help us, Lord, to come into harmony with the laws of health, to eat a good diet, to exercise, to be temperate in all things, that we may be healthy, that we may be happy. And thank you for your grace that alone can enable us to be holy as you are holy. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.